Captain Vaux's fingers drummed the control panel anxiously, as the huge observation window showed Earth looming larger before them. While the others on the bridge monitored readings and chatter on the comms, his attention kept returning to the cryptic message they'd received. All hailing frequencies open, Captain, said his second, Nira. Tracking numerous automated signals but no response to our own hails. Strange for a supposed spacefaring species, Vok mused. He watched the shadow of their ship pass over oceans and swirling weather patterns with mounting curiosity. Something didn't add up here, but what? The landing zone came into view, a large field as promised by old maps based on satellite imagery. Vok peered out as atmospheric engines fired, lowering them with painstaking precision. Life signs ahead, Captain, Nira reported. Several, now dozen. Bipedal, roughly humanoid in shape. Vok unstrapped himself, adjusting the breath mask, all a starry war on their world. Suit up away, team. Let's make first contact. He led the three others to the airlock cycling it open with a hiss. Bright sunlight washed over them, the breeze carrying strange scents. Vok walked ahead cautiously, hands held out diplomatically as the figures approached. To his relief, they seemed as expected, two arms, two legs, faces that could express emotion. A good sign. His universal translator crackled to life. Greetings. I am Captain Vok of the Astari. We come in peace too. The humans ran at them with guttural shouts, brandishing primitive tools as weapons. Vok barely deflected a blow from a club, stumbling back in shock. Stand down. We mean you no harm. His pleas were lost in the frenzy as the others were attacked too. One went down with a knife in her leg, shrieking. Vok fired stun shots unsuccessfully, reluctant to harm the creatures. But they showed no such restraint, swinging and kicking with murderous intensity. A knife slashed Vok's arm before he slammed his attacker aside with a biotic pulse. Breathless, he stared in horror at the crazed mob. Get back to the ship, now! They retreated under a hail of rocks, abandoning their fallen crew member. The airlock snapped shut on a scene from some alien nightmare. Nira worked frantically to patch wounds as Vok sank to the floor, replaying those first savage moments in his mind. The message, it was real, he murmured in shock. There is something very wrong here. After a somber memorial, Vok gathered the crew in the comm room. Damage reports showed their ship largely unharmed but grounded, systems sabotaged by humans. They were stranded with violent humans running amok outside. Explain this behavior, said Calda, the engineer. By all accounts, humanity had achieved reason in community. Appearances can be deceiving, Vok replied darkly. We've seen that firsthand. Nira, did forensic analysis of the attackers turn up anything? She brought up grim test results. Chemical traces in the blood show psychoactive compounds unlike any known to us. Hallucinogenic and hyperaggressive in nature. A biological or psychotropic weapon turned upon its own makers, Vok concluded. We must solve this mystery and repair the ship, or we too will fall victim. Stay alert and trust no one until we learn the truth behind that message, and what really happened to humanity. Still shaken from their previous encounter, Captain Vok and the crew approached the airlock hatch warily, as figures emerged in the field. To their relief, these humans seemed passive, waving and gesturing in a friendly manner. Vok exited first, raising his hands. Greetings. I am Captain Vok. Can you explain what happened earlier? The group conversed soothingly. So sorry about that. Things have been difficult lately. Please, come meet the others in the village. 
Exchanging unsure glances, the Astari followed at a distance. The village was small but industrious, children playing as adults worked. Vox tension eased, seeing normal social behaviors resume. A town elder approached. You must forgive the attackers. The sickness affects behavior, without reason. Sickness? asked Vok. Perhaps our medical facilities could help. The elder nodded solemnly. Our scientists study it, but to no avail. Still, your offer of aid is kind. Stay and rest, you must be weary from travel. That evening, the crew cautiously accepted a celebratory feast in the village square. Vok picked at his food, observing through his breath mask. Humans mingled with alarming mood swings, breaking into hysterical laughter or tears within moments. As night fell, violence erupted faster than anticipated. A hysterical man attacked another, drawing a mob that tore their victim to pieces. The Astari backed away in horror, but more chaos followed. Fights broke out everywhere as the deranged turned on each other in themselves, biting and gouging with savage abandon. Captain, we must leave now, shouted Calda over the screams. They fled for the ship, mobbing humans in sudden pursuit. Vok fired stun shots to disperse the crowd long enough to reach the airlock. Once inside, they sank to the floor in shock. But Nera had no time for recovery. Captain, sensor readings, this village is not what it seems. The technology here is far more advanced than their primitive state would suggest. Indeed, as Vox stared through a monitor, he saw structures phase into view that had been expertly camouflaged before. Sleek metal domes and spires now replaced wooden cottages. An illusion, he breathed. But to what end? And where have the real humans gone? There were no answers in this place, only mystery and menace. They had to find a way to repair the ship and flee before the sickness consumed them too. The abandoned military base loomed ahead, a foreboding yet possibly fruitful destination. Night was falling fast, and the aliens knew they had to find shelter. As Vox scouted the perimeter, he saw no movement within. The crew followed cautiously, keeping weapons ready. Inside, dust and debris choked the halls of what had likely been a thriving government facility. Now it was a silent tomb. Vok pulled up schematics on his data pad, guiding them to buildings likely to contain valuable tech or documents. In the main server room, Nira set to work decoding storage banks while Kalda analyzed intact devices. Hours passed without incident until Nira gasped. Captain, you need to see this. Files streamed across her visor, filled with gruesome experiments on human and alien test subjects. Twisted scientific hypotheses aimed to weaponize biology and psychology. The sickness is no natural phenomenon, rumbled Vok. It was engineered as an homicidal bioweapon, then escaped confinement. But to what ends? A deafening shriek shook the building. They raced outside to see a mutilated giant of a human, strafing the skies with energy beams from cybernetics. Mad cackles echoed as it blasted apart what remained of the military facility. That was once human, cried Nira. Called a scanned it with wide eyes. This facility delved into transhumanism with no restraint. They altered biology at its core level without safeguards. The monster spotted them, turning its hellish gaze. They fled as it gave chase, destroying everything in its path. Vok fired disruptor bolts to little effect. Their only hope lay in the ship, if they could outrun this abomination just a little while longer. On the horizon, salvation came in an unlikely form. More mobs had gathered, drawn by the noise and flashes. They turned as one on the cyber giant, swarming it with sheer numbers. The aliens pressed on, explosions and clashes fading into the night. 
Back at the landing zone, they finally paused to catch their breath. The captain gazed solemnly at Earth's troubled landscape. This world is lost to madness and monsters. Our only choice is to repair our vessel and depart, to carry a warning against those who created such horrors. Under cover of darkness, they worked through the night. Just before dawn, engines roared to life once more. The battered crew took their leave of humanity's fallen domain, fleeing at last into the cosmos, as the sunrise revealed new horrors stirring in the fields below.